And so we're just going to wait a few minutes for other people. Um, Good. We have four people already signed in, so we'll wait just a few. Hopefully people have enjoyed a lovely dinner and going to be able to jump on and enjoy this presentation. Well, I know that you're in Kentucky, and today we had a pretty nice day for January in Wisconsin. So Good. Yeah. It's, uh, it was chilly to us down here, but, you know. <laughs> It's going to get chillier, but it is January, let's face it. That's right. It's That's supposed right. to be that way, right? I vote for taking January out of the year, personally. Right. <laughs> you know, it's too cold, it's too long. <laughs> so, well, it looks like we have just about everybody here. Some people might be jumping on a little late. So I'm going to go right. ahead and get started. And I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. It's our first virtual uh, travel night. And you know, for all of you, I hope you're sitting at home in your comfy clothes and your glass of cordial, whatever you like to drink and ready to hear more about American Cruise Lines. Uh, Jenny and I wanna wish you a very happy new year. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And we're just tonight and we're very excited. This is kicking off our January series. So um, we are going to be going around the world from the office here and uh, we look forward to enjoying the night with you. So just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, Linda's gonna give her presentation and then we're gonna have some question and answer. And just to keep um, things from, you know, we have everybody, the video muted for the, the attendees and also uh, for sound, but you can ask questions if you go to the bottom of your Zoom um, window and you see Q and A. At any time you can type questions in there and Jenny and I will um, ask those to Linda and she'll get those answered. After uh, tomorrow, we'll be sending out a link of the recording for anybody that wants to share it or listen to it again. And you know that Jenny and I are always here to answer any questions that you have at any time. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Linda Heckman from American Cruise Lines. She's gonna feature the lower Mississippi River and also the Columbia and Snake Rivers. So Linda, um, would you like to go ahead and share your screen and start? I the will. Thank you. All right, you should all be seeing my lovely screen. You can see it, Lori? Yes, I can, Linda. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you guys tonight and I love being number one, this is great. So I'm gonna start this presentation by telling you who American Cruise Lines is, first of all. We are an American registered, privately owned US cruise line that own and operate 13 ships on the great rivers of America and the US waterways. We are uh, operating, not currently, but starting in March, we will be in the water again, starting on the lower Mississippi. So we are a little known to a lot of people, but we've been around 35 years. So what we'll also tell you is that we own and operate all of these ships and we build them ourselves. We own a shipyard on the Chesapeake Bay and that's where all of our ships are built. So without further ado, I'm gonna get going here. So this is a shot of the American Song. The American Song is the first in our series of four brand new modern river ships. She is absolutely beautiful. She's a 190 passenger ship. All of her cabins are outside and they all offer a private balcony. This is the American Jazz, one of the sister ships to the American Song. The four ships are the American Song, the American Harmony, the American Jazz, and this year will come the American Melody. So we can see the theme here. We're going with that music theme. Uh, yes, you can board through the nose. And we use that in several of our ports along the way. On the lower Mississippi, we use it in Natchez, Mississippi. Don't use it in Baton Rouge or New Orleans because there's a beautiful port facility there, but this is something that we do use uh, when we're in smaller ports. It's pretty exciting. So this is a map of all of the places where you will find an American Cruise Lines ship. So uh, you can see we're all the way from Maine down the East Coast, all the way down to Florida, across in the Hudson River Valley, the Ohio River, the Cumberland River, from Memphis to Nashville in reverse, 
both parts of the Mississippi upper and lower. And yes, you can take the entire length. If you choose to do so, that's 21 days, the entire length from the Twin Cities down to New Orleans or the reverse. Out west on the Columbian Snake Rivers, beautiful, beautiful part of the country and the last leg of the Lewis and Clark journey. The area of Puget Sound and the San Juan Islands were operating out of Seattle and Alaska. We do from Juneau, all inside passage. So whatever your bucket list has on it, we've got an itinerary for you. And if your bucket list includes, by the way, the intercoastal waterway from Maine to Florida, 3,000 miles, we can take you the entire distance. So what sets American Cruise Lines apart? We have the largest staterooms and the newest fleet of anyone in the US. The ships all have private balconies. All their cabins are private balconies. Complimentary featured shore excursions are offered on, whoops, on every itinerary. Sorry about that. There's elevator access to all decks. Your cabin service is done twice daily. I'm gonna come back to the gratuity. Uh, complimentary Wi-Fi is offered on every sailing. Locally sourced and wonderful food. There's a complimentary cocktail party every evening about an hour prior to dinner that includes hors d'oeuvres. Daily entertainment. We are the all-American experience because we are US registered. We are required by law to have a minimum of 75% of our crew to be US citizens. We choose to do 100%. So all of our deck and engine staff and all of our hotel staff are US. Complimentary beer and wine unlimited is available with lunch and dinner. And frankly, it comes out about 11 o'clock in the morning in the lounges. Now back to that gratuity. We do not accept or ask for a gratuity on the ships. You do not tip our staff. That is the American Cruise Lines difference. Now this is the upper deck of those modern ships. And yes, that is a putting green. And remember folks, it's a putting green. It's not a driving green. So you're welcome to use that. Up. And it's a wonderful place to just sit and, and watch the world go by. And you're always within sight of land. This will give you some idea of what the cabins look like. This, of course, that's Mount St. Helens out the window there. That is a standard room. And the beds are all king size beds. Most ships go no larger than a queen. These are king size beds. All the beds can be split into two. So you simply tell us when you are going to be sailing with us, whether you want it as one bed or two. We'll split them if you want to. Here's a shot of your beautiful private balcony with your unobstructed view. That's a mojito, obviously, for that complimentary cocktail party. Open seating in the dining room. So our dining room is available to you for dinner between oh, 5.30 and 7.30. It is open seating, so you can come in whenever you choose and sit with whomever you want because you're not gonna worry about giving a gratuity to your dining staff. You can sit at any table you choose to. Anything from a four top up to an eight top is available. And the food, by the way, is extraordinary. And there's some of it right there. <laughs> so it's all locally sourced food. We do a shop in farmer's markets when they're available to us, when the weather permits and the chefs do an extraordinary job at the food. And what's a cruise without food? Entertainment on board the ships, there is lecturing on board the ships as well as nightly entertainment. Recently, a year ago, I was on the American Harmony out of New Orleans. The uh, Victory Bells came to perform for us in New Orleans. This is an Andrews Sisters inspired group that performs every day at the World War II Museum in New Orleans and they were absolutely wonderful. And this gentleman is one of the lecturers we have expert lecturers that come on board and specifically, some of these cruises are theme cruises that are gonna deal specifically with certain things. He's a Lewis and Clark expert and he's, he is lecturing out on the Columbian Snake River for that last leg of the Columbia or the uh, Lewis and Clark journey. Uh, there's also a number of wine cruises out there where we bring wine experts on because that is a wonderful part of the wine region of the Pacific Northwest. Here's your lower Mississippi trip, seven nights round trip from New Orleans, or you can go one way from Memphis to New Orleans or the reverse, whichever you choose. Uh, the itinerary is pretty much the same. It's up to you, whichever you decide to do. We're gonna call in uh, Vicksburg, we're gonna call in Natchez, St. Francisville, Baton Rouge, Oak Alley for the Oak Alley Plantation, 
and then into New Orleans. The picture of the plantation you're looking at, by the way, is Hummus House, which is just outside of New Orleans. Every cruise on our river ships offers one night hotel complimentary included. This obviously is a picture of New Orleans and the French Quarter. We use the Intercontinental on Poitras Street in New Orleans, so you're just outside of the French Quarter, but within spitting distance, so you can still enjoy all the wonderful food and what New Orleans has to offer. Uh, it includes breakfast the morning of embarkation. It also includes transfer to the ship along with your luggage on the day of embarkation. All of the shore tours uh, featured wise are included. There is one every day that's offered on every itinerary that's complimentary. Premium shore excursions are something that you would purchase on board the ship if you choose to do so. Typically runs between $25 and $70 a person, depending on the itinerary. An example of that might be uh, if you're in New England and in Maine and you want to go to the Acadia National Park, that one runs about $40 and that includes the entrance into the Acadia National Park. Signature shore tours are very, very limited capacity. They do require pre-booking because of the limited capacity. They also require prepayment. And an example of that would be out on the Columbian Snake River, the Hell's River, or excuse me, Hell's Canyon jet boat ride out on the West Coast. And if you're on the lower Mississippi and you start in Memphis, you can go two nights early and do an Elvis excursion to Graceland. Uh, Graceland has been redone. The Heartbreak Hotel is gone and has been replaced by a new inn that has been created and that's where we put our passengers. You're gonna get a private tour of the mansion and hang on to your hat, cocktails in the jungle room. Now these are the wonderful buses that we're using for our transfers to the ship from the hotels as well as the shore tours. They're incredibly comfortable, obviously beautifully air conditioned. They also have Wi-Fi and a laboratory. This is a shot of Oak Alley Plantation. Those little live oaks of Oak Alley Plantation. Oak Alley is about 20 or so minutes outside of New Orleans. It's an absolutely magnificent place. It's been completely restored. That was in such disarray at one point that there were literally cows living in there breaking through the walls. It's a really wonderful shot back into life in the day of the plantation. Vicksburg, Mississippi. This is the battlefield at Vicksburg, and you will learn more about the battle at Vicksburg than you ever dreamed you would learn when you're on the ship. Uh, the Anaconda Plan, you'll learn all about that in the fall of Vicksburg. And by the way, Vicksburg battle was being fought at the same time as Gettysburg. This particular battlefield is as important in the South as Gettysburg is in the North. Now we're looking at the beautiful Columbia and Snake River Valley. This crew starts in either Portland or in Clarkson, which is close to Spokane. Spokane would be your air city on uh, whichever, the, whichever way you go, Portland to Spokane or vice versa. The ship actually stops in Clarkston, little, little baby town. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful itinerary that includes some, some of the most beautiful scenery you will ever see in this country. Again, it is the Wilmette Wine Valley area, so it's just gorgeous. The trip to Mount St. Helens with their top blown off is included as a featured shore tour. This is Multnomah Falls in Stevenson, Washington. Absolutely magnificent and the second largest waterfall in the country, Niagara Falls being number one. Now this is uh, something I wanna to talk to you about which is our COVID protocol. We have not started sailing yet. We are anticipating to be sailing in March, uh, we have no reason to think that's not going to happen. So this is our COVID protocol, which was confirmed and worked. we worked with the CDC to get this approved back in the summertime. Uh, it is going to maybe be adjusted some, who knows, but it is one of those things that we do need to talk about. There will be COVID protocol. Uh, there will be some different things taking place, one of which is we want you to take our shore excursions. If you choose to stay on the ship, that's fine. We're not going to have people allowed to go off on their own. So you, you need to either take our shore tours or stay on the ship so that we know that the places we're taking you have been tested and are safe for everyone, just an FYI. 
All of the high touch areas on the ship, by the way, are being cleansed hourly. So every elevator button and every doorknob and so on and so forth. Uh, none of the public bathrooms are available on the ship. They will be closed off. The exercise rooms will be closed off. There is alternative dining that's available as well as room service. If you choose not to be in the dining room, it's entirely up to you. And by the way, we have no dress code. So uh, be comfortable and casual when you're on our ships. We want you to enjoy yourselves and be comfortable. Don't worry about bringing any fancy clothes. You don't have to. So um, again, our ships are all built in the yard that we own on the Chesapeake Bay. They have no shared ducting in their ductwork at all. None of the HVAC is shared. Every cabin has their own ductwork. Every public area has their own ductwork. There is no shared system whatsoever on any of our ships. And that was done by design a long time ago. So I think that might be our last slide. It is our last slide. So I'm gonna go back to that. That beautiful shot of Stevenson, because it's so lovely. <laughs> that is beautiful. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, Multnomah Falls is an amazing place to visit. It's just beautiful. Well, um, Linda has been in the river cruise business for a long time, and so she can pretty much answer any questions that you might have. Again, if you would like to ask some questions, go to the Q&A, the little um, Q&A at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, you can ask a question and um, or you can put it in the chat if you want to do that as well. And I'll go ahead and read those questions to Linda. But um, Let's see, we have one question that Jenny's gonna ask here. Okay. I think she has to unmute herself. Yes, one of the questions that I have is, what is the most iconic or the most popular cruise that American Cruise Lines offers? You know, what a great question that is. And thanks for asking that. By and far has always been and always will be the lower Mississippi. There's something about the romance of the lower Mississippi and being able to come into the big easy and experience what New Orleans has to offer and so on and so forth that will always make that itinerary absolutely amazing. And it is the most popular. And it's followed rapidly by the Columbia and Snake River. And we do have new itineraries that we've added recently as well. So we're gonna be adding a music cruise to go from Memphis to Nashville, which is very cool. That's on the Cumberland River. And uh, so you're going to get good barbecue and, and blues on one end and some great hot Nashville chicken and uh, country music on the other end. We are, by the way, able to come all the way into Nashville. We do not have to stop in Clarksville, Tennessee. We can get under the bridges with no problem. We will be docking at Lower Broad, uh, which if people want to do the honky tonks on Lower Broad, they can walk right to them. So Linda, is there a better direction to start in Memphis and end in New Orleans or start? Actually, it, it's, you're going to see the same ports. So truthfully, no. Um, a lot of people like doing Memphis because they want to go to Graceland. They want to see Graceland. They want to go to the Peabody Hotel and watch those ducks waddle down, which is such a fun thing to do if you've not ever done that. Uh, they, of course, it's done morning and evening at the lounge at the Peabody Hotel. Then walk across the street to the rendezvous and have some of the best barbecue you'll ever eat in your life. It's literally across the street from the Peabody Hotel. It's a wonderful itinerary. I used to live in New Orleans, so I'm pretty fond of the Big Easy. Awesome. Okay, Jenny, you have another question? I do. So because I love Alaska and I know that this year, um, you know, we're watching everything unfold and there might right. be some concerns with Canada. So yes. uh, most of the cruises that, you know, we are aware of, um, especially the larger cruises, they at least stop in Canada. So can you tell us um, in the 2021 season what yeah. American Cruise Lines is doing? Yes, and we're so thrilled with this. We operate completely on the inside passage. So our itineraries begin in Juneau. It does include one night complimentary in Juneau, by the way. So you get to explore a little bit on your own in Juneau. All inside passage, we do not call in Canada. And that is because being a US registered cruise line, one of the requirements and one of the laws is that we cannot make a call outside of the US. So we are not calling anywhere in Canada. 
We had anticipated that our Alaska uh, schedule would operate this last summer. Unfortunately, it did not because the government of Alaska had, as you girls know, some very strict uh, requirements and no one was able to operate in Alaska this year when we really thought we would. So we are certainly hoping to be able to go there this next summer. But round trip Juno is what we're doing. There's a seven night itinerary as well as a 10 night. Awesome. Um, okay, so we, uh, we have a question here that is, what time of the year is the best time to travel the lower Mississippi? Okay, so you're talking about my little neck of the woods in the southeast here, because I live in Kentucky, in, in southern Kentucky. Um, Weather-wise, it is best in the fall, because it's not as hot. But it's good all year round. So you're going to be on air-conditioned buses when you go to Vicksburg, when you go to Two Natchez, when you go to those places. So yeah, it's gonna be warmer weather uh, and can be very hot in that summer months in August, July and August in the uh, lower Mississippi. So I would say the fall is probably the best, but I've been there year round and I used to live in New Orleans. So there's not a bad time to go. Believe me, there's not a bad time to go. Okay. There's a little port of call, by the way, on that itinerary that St. Francisville, Louisiana, that some people may have heard of, maybe not, um, it happens to be where Angola Prison is located. Um, and Lester Holt, the NBC anchor, uh, did three nights in Angola Prison a few months ago. It was pretty interesting to watch. But anyway, it's a little bitty baby place. And um, it's one of my favorite places to go on the itinerary. Uh, there's a lovely little shop there that's called My Grandmother's Buttons. And it's just a delightful little store to go shopping in. Beautiful jewelry, little tchotchkes, purses, pashminas, fun little things to buy. And it's all local stuff. It's great. That's terrific. And I think a lot of people are, you know, considering staying close to Absolutely. the U.S. borders this year. What about if you have people that are maybe upper 70s or um, in that age range? Is there a better itinerary that's more suited to... Um, maybe mobility? Um, I would stay away from New England for the most part. Now, I hate to say that, but there are a lot of cobblestones on those itineraries. So be careful if you have mobility issues. We can accommodate pretty much anybody with a mobility issue. We carry golf carts on the, on the ship. So if you need help to get from the ship to the bus, we'll just drive you right up to the bus. That's not a problem whatsoever. Um, the, the cabins can accommodate motorized scooters. So they're spacious enough that you can hold all those. So it's not an issue whatsoever. Right, so, and I think that the hotel style bathrooms are a big plus yes. for the ship because you don't usually get bathrooms that are that spacious. Yeah, remember when we first started cruising, Lori, and you could barely turn around in the shower? <laughs> That's not like that. And it's a lovely glass shower, it's beautiful. The other thing that I think it's important to point out is that you do offer some paddle wheel style ships. We do. Some modern ships as well. So you can sort of right. pick what you'd like. In, in exactly. If you're looking for the paddle wheel experience, you can do that on the Mississippi with the Queen of the Mississippi or the America out West. It's the Queen of the West or the American Pride. All of those are beautiful paddle wheelers. You know, our ships are very small, Laura, you know this, but our ships are very small. We go no larger than 190 passengers is as big as we go. And I suspect that that will probably voluntarily be reduced when we come back and service probably by about 25%. So I'm going to encourage anyone who's thinking about making a trip next year or even into 2022, please don't wait. If you know what itinerary you want, if you know that you are absolutely have got to go to the Arch in St. Louis on that part of the Mississippi River, please don't hesitate. Get yourself booked so that you get the cabin that you want as quickly as possible. It's going to be limited. So um, Melinda, what's the biggest difference between a modern ship and the paddleboard ship? Um, decor for one. Uh, modern ships are very beautifully pointed with very modern decor. A paddle wheel tries to take you back into the era of when they operated on the rivers. So the core wise, the cabins are a little smaller on your paddle wheelers because they're a little older um, and because it's, it's just the, the ships are smaller. So 190 passengers on the Mississippi turns into 160 on a paddle wheeler and then think 25% less than that. So 
No, like, I correct you still got those beautiful cabins and those beautiful balconies. Yeah. And most of the cabins on the ships are veranda and- Absolutely. What's the square footage, uh, like the average square footage? About 350. Wow. That's mm -hmm. incredible because- For a river a ship, of, yeah. <laughs> a lot of river cruises in Europe, uh, 200 is a big- Exactly. Without being a suite is, is the, yeah. the typical. Yeah, um, and of course there are some beautiful suites on the ships as well as owner suites and those kinds of things that go even bigger. So you still have time to put a few um, questions here and, and the Q&A are in the chat. Um, I did wanna tell everybody that they do have a group, uh, a group plan that if you have five cabins or more that you can get $300 off per person and groups are open through 2022, Correct. I would imagine. I don't know if 2023 is. It'll is be open very shortly if it's not open yet. We open right. our books very early. And you know, one of the things that I want people to understand because 2020 canceled basically or postponed let's put it that way everybody that was booked is rebooking so a lot of those people that were booked for june of 2020 have already booked 2021 so please don't let the space be gone i mean seriously if you really know that you want to go to the vicksburg battlefield if you're a civil war buff if you want to make sure you get into New Orleans and get to go to the World War II Museum, which I would highly recommend, please don't wait. Okay, so um, my last question is, and Jenny might have more, is let's just say you, you know, you're just ready to get out of here and you want to do something this late spring, like April or May, and you book a lower Mississippi, and then the time comes and things still aren't right with the virus, or you just, you know, you're you're yep. not quite certain you want to do it. What is the rebooking policy during the COVID times? Well, right now? If we suspend the cruise, then we are offering 125% in the form of a cruise voucher towards another cruise. So if you spent $10,000, you're going to get 12,500 12, towards your new cruise, which is great. Obviously, if we suspend the cruise, you get a full refund. Uh, if it's a voluntary cancellation, our standard cancellation fees do apply. Okay. We do have a program that's called Cruise with Comfort. It has not been extended. It might, but we're anticipating that we're going back in the water, so we're not going to make that decision yet. If, in fact, that gets, gets extended, Cruise with Comfort allows people to cancel up to 24 hours <laughs> in advance and receive a voucher for 100% of whatever they've spent. Wow, that's incredible. We opt that's into it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, very good peace of mind. Jenny, do you have any other questions? Yes, I do have a few actually. Good. I, Hit me, babe. <laughs> thank you for all of this great information, Linda. I've learned a lot. Um, you know, the river cruising is always across the world is wonderful, but it's great to hear a bit more on some of our local. You know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that, Jenny. I had a conversation with a gentleman just this week, who told me he'd been to Paris 10 times and he'd been to the top of the Eiffel Tower six times, which is wonderful, more power to him. And I asked him if he'd ever been to the top of the arch in St. Louis. And he told me no. <laughs> I told him he can see Paris from the top of the arch in St. Louis. <laughs> oh, we so have one other question that came in. Um, does the cost of the insurance coincide with the cost of the cruise? So like a lot of travel insurance, it's based on age and no, cost of- It's a set fee and it depends on, I'd have to look it up quite frankly to look at the prices. I don't remember off the top of my head, but we have something we call cancel for any reason insurance. And then we have the comfort, okay? Cancel for any reason insurance is literally that we're self-insured and you buy that. Cruise with comfort doesn't cost any money. We don't charge you for that. But you're not offering it. You simply opt into and you tell us you want it. Okay. So, so the cruise with comfort though, you may not extend. We may not extend past March, uh, but if people are booking in March, they would have the option to have cruise with comfort. Okay. So that might be a good option for some last minute travel to, yep. to know that. And literally at 24 hours before you, our package begins, you can, and we don't cancel, we don't care the reason. If you don't like your manicure and don't want to go, that's fine. 
we just, you know, we want you to be able to have a little bit of peace of mind that, you know, if, if you can't go or if your spouse is uncomfortable or if you have a family member, something happens, who knows? We want you to feel comfortable. Every dime that you have spent with us would go on a cruise voucher that's good for the follow through the following year and transferable. Okay, so like if if I didn't want to if I canceled, I could send Jenny if I yes. couldn't go. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So can uh, I ask just because I love to visualize and I get excited about what my um, experiences are going to be. So. Can you explain to all of us, what are some of the enrichments that are offered on board? I know you touched on it earlier, but could you expand on some of that, Linda? Oh, sure. Um, we're gonna hire the best lecturers we can possibly find on every itinerary. So on those wine cruises out on the Colombian Snake River, not only are there wine experts, they're from specific wineries that are gonna then take you to their winery and you're gonna sample their wines along with their pairings on the ship for dinner that evening. It's wonderful. I tell you, it's wonderful. That's neat. Is the that gentleman cool? that lectures on the lower Mississippi about the Anaconda plan and the Battle of Vicksburg, I'm not kidding you. If I had a teacher like that when I was in high school, <laughs> leave me, I would have aced history. The guy, <laughs> everything come alive. Whoever, I hadn't even heard of the Anaconda plan until I moved to New Orleans and started traveling on the river, so. So the wine cruises, on the snake in Columbia, those are not every cruise on the snake. No, they're not. They're not. So they're, they're a theme cruise. cruise. And they're on our website, so you know which ones they are. Okay. And, and I saw that. Directions. Okay. I saw that you have a lot of theme cruises from yes. like lobster and crab bakes out east. And yeah, and what we do is we, we do a lobster and a clam bake on the beach. And then the gentleman that performs the, that owns the company that provides all the provisions for that picks a people and then they go out with him the next day and do lobster and clamming which is really kind of cool yeah that's really neat the music cruises are wonderful like i mentioned before N nashville to memphis or vice versa those are great with beautiful music my life centers around music and food so <laughs> uh you also offer something in florida in a yes which is interesting and very 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 popular itinerary it's called the uh, golden isles and we operate from charleston down to amelia island which is basically jacksonville uh, it's a wonderful itinerary that includes just some really really fun places to go and enrichment charleston you know midnight in the garden of good and evil and and those wonderful parts of the southeast that are beautiful there but we also do the intercoastal so like i mentioned if people want to do the intercoastal waterway they have if you want to pet a manatee Come with us. We'll take you on the intercoastal and you can pet a manatee if you want to. And then you have some tied to the Revolutionary War. Yes, which we do. You're, you know, into the history. Round trip from Baltimore. And again, one of the most popular itineraries we have every year, and it will be again in fall of this year, Hudson River Valley for fall foliage. It's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And it does go to West Point. And it does go to Sleepy Hollow, so you can have the legend of Ichabod Crane on your fall foliage trip. And it's round trip from New York City. Very cool. So you can go to Little City. It's great. And what a great experience. Yeah, it's wonderful. Very, very popular. Okay. Typically it sells out a year in advance, so that's when you really don't want to wait on. That was another question. So how far in advance in a you know, non-COVID era do people book? Um, again, we've got more lift down in the lower Mississippi and in the Pacific Northwest than any place else. So you've got more beds to choose from out there and more ships to choose from. If you're looking at some of these itineraries that have, you know, a couple of sailings two or three times a year, don't wait. That Hudson River Valley will sell a year in advance. So you should be thinking about fall of 2022 right now. Yep. I talked to a gal today who told me she just booked three cabins on Columbian Snake River for this fall, and she had to, to swap dates around to get what she wanted already. Okay, good to know. That is a beautiful, beautiful area. I think that's oh, amazing. Lovely. Well, actually, the screenshot that we have in the background, my brother-in-law 
um, proposed to my sister-in-law right there at Multnomah Falls. Oh, how wonderful. So, yeah, so the wedding was out there and I had a chance to explore the uh, the gorge and the Snake River and such. And it's spectacular. It's kind of a it hidden is. gem. So it I definitely recommend. So that little town of Astoria, Oregon is on that itinerary as well, which is a lovely little place named after John Jacob Astor, who had a fur company out there. But it's also where the movie Goonies was filmed as well as Kindergarten Cop. Uh-huh. It's just really a fun little place. So what happens oh, like- Useless a- information. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, on a typical day, let's say in the Mississippi, you, you stop, um, you do your excursion. How long do those excursions usually last? Are, do you bring you back for lunch? Like if you're yes. out in the morning, you come back for yes. lunch? Yes, so it's possible to go out and do another short excursion. So if you want to do a homeless house, for example, in the morning to visit that plantation, come back to the ship and then go out in the afternoon to the Battle of Vicksburg, to the battlefield, that's easily done. Okay. So you can kind of design your day however you absolutely. feel like you want to. Yep, absolutely. Um, yep. And in the meantime, come back to the ship, have a nice warm cookie. The uh, coffee machines are always up and running. The wine is there, the beer is there, the snacks are there, help yourself. Yes, well, with lunch at, with, for lunch, you can have beer and wine um, included. Yep. I don't know, maybe it would have to be a siesta <laughs> time after that. <laughs> so, great. Well, I, we don't have any other, well, one question just popped in here. Um, okay. Let's see. Do you arrange travel to and from the river cruise? Um, we don't do air. Uh, we're not, we only do what we do best, which is the river. So you would do the air. <laughs> right. That's what we're really good at. Mind folks yeah. too that a lot of our destinations are driving destinations. So even if you're going just, if you're going one way between Memphis and New Orleans, what's a car rental? It's yeah. not much. Right. Um, do you, um, do the land tours include like the headset so you can hear yes. like, okay. Yes. Um, just a little, you know, as many of you know that have worked with us before that Jenny and I can customize anything pre or post that you would want to do. So um, whether it's a car rental between something or a flight, you know, um, so don't, you know, we can definitely do that. Yep. So we talked about the lower Mississippi in particular, and again, it's always going to be our most popular, but please don't forget the upper Mississippi as well. The river is completely different on the top than it is on the bottom. So you can sail from the Twin Cities to St. Louis, St. Louis to Memphis, and Memphis down to New Orleans the entire length, or just whatever portion it is that you want. Right. So if you don't want to fly, you could take Amtrak too. Yeah, right. and, if people, and people like long if anybody likes a long cruise, you know, people that like around the world cruises and those type of things, think about taking the entire length of the Mississippi River. You won't be disappointed. Lori and I often work with the customization as you know, she was mentioning here and we've worked with, um, with train travel yep. um, one way or another, as well as, um, you know, I love the Juno option in Alaska. Mm -hmm and a short flight to Anchorage and then let us, you know, really get in there and customize and design for, you know, the clients, these wonderful experiences and, you know, Denali and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and such and get into the interior. But I love the flexibility um, and the experience that the American Cruise Lines is gonna be able to offer and yeah. then we can certainly design around that too. So that itinerary has about two days in the inside passage. That's, That's wonderful. It's amazing. So you're going to sit on your private balcony, drinking your coffee in the morning and eating your eggs, and a sheet of ice is going to fall into the water. It's phenomenal. <laughs> and the eagles are going to come by, and the puffins are going to come by. It's great. What I just love about your ship opportunity is the balconies, because oh, yeah. the other small ships um, aren't able to offer those balconies, and that is your bird's eye view right there, as Absolutely. you said, at the face of a glacier, or being able to see the bears on the shoreline and such. And so, they're completely unobstructed. Yeah. There's no worry about obstruction. Right, and if you want to go to the top deck or out to the public areas, you're not that far away. Like, yeah, go up there and, and hit some golf balls again. Remember now, that's a putting green. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say sign me up for that wine cruise, Linda. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, since we don't have any other questions, I think that we will end this, end this webinar, but feel free to reach out to Jenny and I um, as you think of anything else, or if you'd like to um, you know, explore what kind of um, you know, options that you might have for this year or next. Yeah. Um, oh, here's an, one, one question that just came in. At what time of day does the ship usually travel? Is, does it travel at, at night? night? At night. Okay. At night. So. Yep. So um, that you're on shore doing your shore excursions during the daytime. And okay. at night, the ship is moving. And keep in mind until COVID restrictions ease, you wouldn't be able to get off the ship at night and wander around into the ports mm -hmm. um, just to keep everybody safe and healthy. It's for safety purposes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's the wise thing to do. That's right. Um, well, thank you, Linda, so much for your time yeah, and all your knowledge. And um, there's so many great possibilities. Get your bucket list out and start marking things off. Right. It's a great oh, thing to do this right? time of year. Be sure and go to the top of the arch in St. Louis and look for Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done that. Ever, so. <laughs> you've not ever been in the arch. It's a very interesting trip to the top of the arch. It, it is definitely worth doing. Yep. Um, so I just wanted to remind everybody that next week we have Avalon Waterways who um, sail mostly in Europe, but they um, are exp you know, expanding into Egypt and they do Southeast Asia as well. And we have Rocky Mountaineer coming up the week after, which will feature from Denver to Moab on their new service, but they also do the Canadian Rockies. And lastly, we're gonna have um, Celtic Tours uh, uh, talking about Ireland. So the Zoom link for the next webinar will come out over the weekend and you can sign up like you did tonight and please share it with anyone that you would like. And we'll see you all hopefully next week. Thank That's you a so wonderful much. series, by the way. For everyone. Congratulations. That's a wonderful series. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad to kick it off for you. <laughs> yes, Linda's our guinea pig, and I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope everyone has a good night. If you've been watching This Is Us, it's going to be back on tonight. So make sure you tune in at 8 o'clock. <laughs> or take it. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank okay, good night. Good night. <laughs>